Hi everyone, I'll be discussing about two additional security options beyond using a password to protect your VeraCrypt containers, key files and PIM, personal iterations multiplier. Key files are secret files that you carry around. So instead of just using a password to decrypt the container, you also need the special file. The file could be anything, a picture, document, even a song. VeraCrypt then uses your password and the key file in order to unlock the container. You're also not limited to just one file. You can use as many as you want, so a spreadsheet combined with a picture and an ebook. But you have to be careful and make sure that you don't lose these files and make sure that they don't get corrupted. VeraCrypt uses the first 1024 kilobytes in the file, so you have to make sure that the file doesn't get lost or the first 1024 kilobytes is not corrupted. And there's PIM, Personal Iterations Multiplier. You start with your password that only you know, and you put it in a math function called the key derivation function, and it outputs a new password which will decrypt your container. Now you can use this key derivation function multiple times, which means the attacker also would need to know this value as well. The drawback to this is that the higher the number, the longer it will take you to also decrypt the container as it keeps going through the math function. Now I'm going to set up both key files and PIM. And you can also set up either or. It doesn't necessarily need to be both at the same time. So I'm in VeraCrypt here. I'm going to create a volume. I'll create an encrypted file container. I'll create a standard VeraCrypt volume. And now I'm going to create it, select file, call it VeraCrypt container. I'll use the defaults, AES and SHA-512, and I'll use a size of one gigabyte. Put in my password, and I'm gonna use key files, I'm gonna use PIM. Go to key files. And before I add in any key files, if you want to generate a random key file, you can go down to the bottom, and it'll ask you the number of key files you want to create. I'm gonna create one, and then I'm gonna use the size of 1024, as the first 1024 kilobytes is used. And you can use any key file base name. I'm just gonna name it as KF. I'm going to move my mouse, and then once ready, generate and save key file. And if I go into my VeraCrypt folder, see here that there's my key file. Now I'm going to add in the key files. So my key files are the randomly generated key file, and then I have an image, a JPEG, and lastly, a media file, an MP4 file. And the order doesn't matter. Now I'm going to go to OK, and then Next. So when left empty or set to zero, VeraCrypt will use a default value 485 that ensures a high security. So I'm gonna use 500 and this pop-up comes up indicating that you've chosen a PIM value that is larger than VeraCrypt default value. Please note that this will lead to much slower mount boot. Okay, and I'm just gonna move my mouse, NTFS. And then when ready, go to format. Okay, it's been successfully created, exit. Go back to my downloads folder and there's my VeraCrypt container. I mount it. Now I'm going to put my password alone. And we can see here that it failed. I didn't include the key files and I didn't include the PIM value. So I'm going to do it again and use the PIM 500. And we see here that it failed again as I did not include the key files. And now I'm going to include the key files. So now it's mounted and the Z drive is available. So that's it. That's VeraCrypt key files and PIM. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.